I just bought this fire damaged house. Check this thing out. This wasn't just a little toaster fire in the kitchen. This house is burnt crispy. It's actually not as bad as it looks. On this video using a real life deal, I'm gonna show you why you don't suck at wholesaling. Why you are actually awesome at wholesaling. Like I said, I just bought this fire damaged house. It's in Oklahoma City and it was brought to me by my student, Mike. Mike got the contract for 80,000 and I paid him a $10,000 wholesale fee for finding and bringing me this deal. Congratulations, Mike, you are a flipping genius. The cool part is Mike lives in Arizona and has never seen this property in person. And check it out. This house was listed for sale on market with an agent for $150,000. Did you catch that? Mike got this deal for almost half of list price. Amazing. Don't ever tell me there aren't motivated sellers on market. Next time someone tells you that, you have my permission to slap them. Now, in case you didn't know, I buy properties to flip all over the US, even now in a declining market, and I have a finder program where I'll pay you $10,000 for every deal you find and submit to me that meets my criteria. Now, if that sounds exciting to you, just go to my10kcheck.com to learn more. And that's exactly what my student Mike did. And on this video, I'm gonna show you the five-step process for how Mike found and secured the deal, and most importantly, what made it a good deal for me and why I paid Mike $10,000. All right, let's get to work. Step one in the wholesaling process is to find a distressed property where the seller is motivated to sell that unwanted property at a discount. One method that motivated sellers use to sell their unwanted distressed properties is to hire a real estate agent to list the property for sale on the MLS. This is called on market and once it's listed, it also shows up for sale publicly on sites like Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com and other sites. Now to make the process of finding distressed properties even easier and faster, I developed a software that finds all of the underpriced properties actively for sale in any market in the US. All you do is enter the zip code and it will instantly give you a comprehensive list of every underpriced house in that zip code. And the best part is, I'll give you this software for free. Not a trial, but unlimited access for free. Just go to mydatacruncher.com. Now using my software tool, Mike found this property in Oklahoma City listed for sale with an agent for 150,000. Now let me tell you a little bit about it. It's 1,454 square feet on a slab foundation. It has three beds and one and a half baths, and it has a carport. Now you can't really tell from the outside, but this property needs extensive repairs. Take a look. As you can see, it has extensive fire damage. It looks burnt crispy, but most of what you see is smoke damage and not fire damage. But I'd say this fits the description of a distressed property. Now after finding a distressed property, Step two is to calculate your maximum allowable offer or MAO. I mean, you can't make an offer until you first know what a good offer even is. So step two is the underwriting or analysis process. Remember, as a wholesaler, you're trying to get a deal a cash buyer would wanna buy, so you're underwriting it from their perspective. In order to calculate the MAO, you need to figure out two critical numbers the after repair value or what it will resell for once it's fixed up and the cost of repairs to fix it up. Let's start first with repairs. Estimating the cost of repairs trips up a lot of wholesalers because they're intimidated by not knowing how much it costs to fix up houses. Let me show you how I've made this brain dead easy. Of all the years I've been rehabbing houses, I've come to realize that there are only three different levels of a rehab. Every rehab falls into one of these three categories. Level one is what I call a light rehab. This is basically just carpet and paint. Level two rehab is what I call average, which in addition to carpet and paint includes a new kitchen and bathrooms. And then the third level is what I call heavy. This is a gut rehab or a redesign. Like this deal in Oklahoma, a heavy rehab needs everything such as new drywall, roofs, windows, and so on. And like I said, every rehab fits one of these three levels. So what I did was I created a deal analyzer software with built-in algorithm that calculates the cost of repairs per each level based on the square footage of the house. And I'll give this to you for free. Just go to mydealanalyzer.com. When it comes to rehabs that are light or average, those are pretty easy for flippers to get their heads around as far as cost, but heavy rehabs can be tricky to figure out. For example, this deal is difficult to calculate without really understanding how extensive the fire damage is. 
Now I can ballpark, but the only way to really know is to get bids from qualified contractors. Like I said, it's not a simple carpet and paint type of project that's easy to figure out. So my student Mike did what any good wholesaler should do on a big scary project. He found a local reputable contractor to give a comprehensive bid to fix the fire damage and remodel the entire house. Why is that a good move? Because as a wholesaler, your job is to make it as easy as possible for a cash buyer to make a decision about buying your deal. Remember, wholesaling is just problem solving for cash buyers. Cash buyers' biggest problem is finding good deals. The better you are at solving problems, the more money you'll make as a wholesaler. I like to say, remove the scary from the equation and the decision is easy. And I did a video about a house I wholesaled in Indianapolis that had foundation problems. I got bids to fix it and provided those bids to potential cash buyers and I was able to wholesale the house. Now, if you wanna watch that video, I'll put the link in the description below for you. So that's what my student Mike did. Here's the bid he got. It came in at 112,000, which feels about right. Now this bid is comprehensive and the only contingency was for windows since they're boarded up. Now, I did a call with the contractor to discuss his bid. Take a listen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking time to put that bid together. I took a look at it. Yes. You know, I flip houses, been doing it for a long time. New to Oklahoma City, like that market, kind of hoping to do some more deals there. I think that market's going to do okay, you know, this next year during the down market. I think we're actually going to hold steady for the next year from the way it's, everybody's been telling me. I mean, it's just priced affordable there. So it's it, there's very few markets in the country that you know, are under 400. Let's, let's hope. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, this thing is charred crispy. I mean, man, talk about a fire damaged house. Well, actually it's the smoke in the main house. The inside is, is it's all smoke damage. So it looks worse yeah. than it is. It looks worse than it is, but we're still tearing everything back to the studs. Mm -hmm. There was only one upgrade that I didn't know if you'd be interested in or not. I'm not a flipper. I'm a builder. Yeah. We've been having a lot of luck when we're tearing these houses back, especially these old ones with foam insulation. It just, it makes such a difference in the drafty old houses. Is that in the rafters or even in the walls? It's in the walls. They fill the cavity with foam. And then after we've done the wiring and the plumbing and everything, and it just... It's a spray it's or is it... How do you put it in? It's spray close to foam. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for that. I know you also had a question about windows because they're boarded. So who knows what's going on there? Is there any other unforeseens that you don't see in, in that number you provided? No, we've covered everything else. The only gotcha in there is going to be the windows. Since then, I've been I've been doing a little more investigation on because I've got another client that is going to need windows. Most of the houses that we work on are historical part of Oklahoma City, and so I usually there's a guy here in Oklahoma City that. that rebuilds those windows it's pretty expensive i found a company marvin windows that actually builds a full wood window is it because that's historic they have to be wood yes okay they literally will not let you touch it so what do people do pella windows or you or you build them yourself is what you're saying they do pella or they have this guy come in and yeah. Re rebuild it yeah but those aren't those aren't cheap huh no but in comparison to what that costs the marvin windows actually are pretty reasonable not much more than what a regular window would be. and probably no wait time uh, there's probably like a three-week lead time. Yeah, but that's probably a lot better than what Pella's going to give you. Yeah, big time. I just finished a job that we did at a 16-week lead time on the window. What's your schedule look like to get started if if we go forward? I think we can get on to you pretty quick. Okay. And once we get all the paperwork signed, I'll get a lockbox over there. Yeah, What what's your time frame look like uh, end to end? End to end, probably, probably somewhere around six weeks. So ready, ready to relist in six weeks? Six to eight weeks, I think. You guys don't mess around. That's fast. That's turnkey, ready to ready to sell. Yes. Fantastic. That's great. Once we get the demolition done, and then things move pretty quickly. Yeah. I find that the hardest part is getting to drywall. So I always look at it in two phases. What do we got to do to get to drywall? All the rough and everything. Once you're at drywall, it's easy. It's just putting it back together then. you know, It's all surface then. I mean, especially if you can get materials quick. We're doing okay. The only thing that holds up materials these days is brick and windows. Everything else seems to be functioning kind of as normal. I'm hoping to hit a 300 or so price point. What did you end up paying for? 90? Yeah. That should be good. We should be okay. Yeah, as long as we can keep the budget. I don't see us going over budget. We, I normally don't go over budget. That's awesome. So. But yeah, I, I've heard great things about you and I'm excited to crank this thing out. And we're looking for some more deals over there too. So be awesome to set up a great relationship. That'd be good. Yeah, I play the long games. If you can do great work and fast and reasonable pricing, then and I know I can count on that, then I'll I can be a little more aggressive too on on trying to buy stuff. Sounds good. Do you see any um issues with permitting? No. 
city will bend over backwards to try to get that house rebuilt okay uh, and improve that neighborhood you understand we need to probably look at some curb appeal there on the front of that thing kind of need that front to pop a little bit so it looks looks nice from the road sounds good i'll get with tan and see what she can come up with and get you some drawings okay perfect see you later Jerry. Bye. okay bye now, I hope that was helpful. In my experience, especially doing heavy rehabs, there are always unforeseen things that come up that you didn't anticipate. Not sometimes, every time. So I'm gonna bump the rehab budget up to 120,000. Now that gives me another $8,000 in unforeseen expenses on top of his bid for 112,000. Now, side note here before we move on past rehab costs, don't spend the time to get bids until after you get a fully executed contract with the seller. Ballpark the numbers using my deal analyzer and get the contract with an inspection contingency. That means you have time to do due diligence on the property. During that due diligence time, get bids and solidify your numbers. If the numbers come back super high and you discover you don't have a deal, you can renegotiate or exercise the contingency and terminate the contract. Now, I recently did a live deal breakdown like this where that's exactly what happened. I even recorded the call where I attempted to get a price reduction. I'll put that video link in the description below and you can watch it later. Now, the reason why it's important to do contract first, due diligence second, is so you're not wasting time on a deal you don't have under contract. By the way, if you need a good rehab estimator tool, I'll give you mine for free. I'll put the download link in the description below for you. Okay, now that we have a good handle on the rehab budget of 120,000, next, in order to figure out our MAO, is we need to determine the after repair value or ARV of this house. In other words, if I spend 120,000 to make this house look brand new, what can I resell it for on the open market to a retail buyer? In order to figure that out, I need to see what other similar renovated properties in the same neighborhood are selling for. We call these similar properties comps and the process we call comping properties. Now let me show you how I did my ARV analysis. First thing is, I want to take a look at the market trends in that market. You can see this at the bottom of the property listing on Redfin or other sites like Realtor.com. As you can see, in central Oklahoma City, the market has flattened, but so far not really dipped too bad with this recent market slowdown. Now, it may still drop, but as of this recording, not yet. And that's a broad area. If we take a look at the local neighborhood, my subject property is located here in the historic district called Jefferson Park. So now I wanna look at actual comps in this neighborhood or as close as possible to this neighborhood to figure out my ARV. So again, my deal is in this area and looking at similar homes that were renovated just in the past few months, there are five sold comps. This house on Hudson that sold for 213 bucks per foot. This house on 22nd Street sold for $204 per foot. This house on 22nd Street sold for $223 per foot. This house here on 21st Street sold for $232 per foot. And finally, this house on 27th Street that sold for $234 per foot. Now, if I take the average of these five sold comps, it comes to $221 per foot. Now, keep in mind, even though Oklahoma City is holding out okay with this current market correction, I still need to anticipate it might experience some correction. And there are a few actives also that are sitting and not selling so to factor in some depreciation, I'm gonna discount the ARV about 15 bucks per foot down to $206 per foot. So if I take 206 bucks per foot times 1,454 square feet, that equals 300,000 for the adjusted ARV. Now I created a tool that will help you comp properties that makes the process fast and easy, and I'll give it to you for free. Just go to compmydeal.com. Now that I have a rehab budget of 120,000 and an ARV of 300,000, I can run a simple formula to determine my max buy price. To do that, there are two other soft costs to consider when flipping a house, and don't forget the most important figure, the flipper's desired profit. The first soft cost is closing and commissions. When flipping a house, there are fees to buy it and fees again to resell it, including commissions. On average, closing and commissions come to 9% of ARV. The other soft cost is financing, or what I call carrying cost. Since most flippers borrow short-term financing called hard money or private money, carrying costs is what the flipper pays in financing during the time they own the property. On average, carrying costs is about 6% of ARV. And my goal, and what I highly recommend you do as well if you're flipping houses, is factor 15% of ARV for profit. 
And when you add up closing, carrying, and profit, that comes to 30% of ARV that has to come right off the top. So a simple formula flippers use is ARV times 70% minus repairs equals the flippers buy price. In our example, 300,000 ARV times 70% minus 120,000 in rehab equals 90,000 as the flippers max buy price. And since I'm paying my student 10,000 as a wholesale fee, the contract price with the seller needs to be 80,000. By the way, I built a deal analyzer tool that automatically calculates all the numbers for you. It's included for free with my comping tool. Again, to get that for free, just go to compmydeal.com. Now that we've figured out the max buy price of 80,000, step three is to make an offer and secure a contract. Following my double dip technique, Mike went directly to the listing agent and offered her to also represent him in the offer. By doing so, the agent got both sides of the commission and went to bat for Mike with the seller. And since the seller was extremely motivated, they took his $80,000 cash offer on their $150,000 listing. Now, if you'd like my agent scripts, I'll give them to you for free. Just go to agentofferscripts.com. Now, since this deal is on market, the agent handled the contract between Mike and the seller and handled opening escrow and scheduling closing with the title company. Once the contract is secured with the seller, step four is to do an official assignment of contract. Now, since Mike is in my finder program and since I'm the cash buyer, we executed an assignment agreement for $10,000 and got that over to title. And in case you didn't know, last year, the state of Oklahoma passed legislation that wholesalers are not allowed to publicly market an equitable interest for sale without having an active real estate license. So how did we do this transaction? Well, since my student Mike is in my finder program, there was no public marketing that took place. It was a personal relationship between Mike as a wholesaler and me as a cash buyer. If you'd like to learn more about this Oklahoma law, I did a video that breaks it down in detail, link in the description. Next is step five, the actual closing. On that day, as the cash buyer, I wired 90,000 plus some closing fees and using those proceeds, title paid off the seller for 80,000 and Mike got a wire for $10,000. And there you have it. If you found this comprehensive breakdown of a real live deal super helpful, leave a comment and say, Jerry, thank you, you are a flipping genius. And if you'd like to see additional videos about how I rehab and flip this house remotely, leave a comment and let me know and I'll see you on the next video.